dystonia can be very variable with regards to its phenotypic presentations. And there's no um, sort of biomarker that one can use to um, prove the, the diagnosis of a um, dystonic syndrome necessarily. And so um, one of the um, things to keep in mind or to separate from organic dystonia is functional dystonia. And uh, Mark, Mark Edwards from London and many others um, have spent a lot of um, attention um, to this concept of functional movement disorders and um, helped to evolve this field. Um, in Parkinson's disease, I've been fascinated by the fact that um, 10 to 12 or 15 percent of patients who present with a clinical phenotype of Parkinson's disease um, may turn out to have a normal death scan. So they may not have true Parkinson's disease. Uh, these people have been identified in large clinical trials at the beginning of the century, um, where up to like 1,500 or 2,000 people had been enrolled um, based on their clinical diagnosis um, of Parkinson's disease in, in well-renowned centers across the world uh, diagnosed by clinical experts. But then in hindsight, um, one found that they have normal death scans and um, they have been given the acronym of SWEDS, so subjects without evidence of dopaminergic deficit. And of course, one wonders um, in how far these people should um, uh, respond to dopaminergic treatment if they don't have a dopaminergic deficit. And this uh, may be one of the reasons why these large trials failed in the past. And so this is why I believe that this precision medicine approach now is very timely. And hopefully this um, shall give us more information um, when we try to treat the underlying pathophysiology rather than the clinical phenotype. 